it is nice. So, we are here. It is Wednesday, the 24th of February, and we're here for gentle. And I'm going to start on the floor today at home. Feel free to sit up in a chair if you want to. Um, all the warm-ups you can do sitting in a chair or you can sit on the floor. And if you are sitting on the floor and you're not comfortable, get comfortable, right? Grab a blanket if you want. Sit up on a blanket or two if that makes your hips feel better. If you'd rather stretch your legs out long rather than sit cross-legged, do. And if you want to use blocks, you know, you can always put blocks underneath your outside of your legs there to give you a little support if you feel iffy at all in your hips. So you just want to sit comfortably in a, and being able to lengthen up through the top of your head. So let yourself just ease your way upward through the crown of your head. Feel your eyes gently close. And just feel your breath coming in and going out through your nose. See if you can imagine that you're bringing the breath in equally through both sides of your nose. And the same thing on your exhale. So you're breathing equally out through both sides of your nose. Bring the breath into the belly, feeling your belly expand as you inhale. And then just start to move a little bit with your breath now. So as you exhale, let your back stay long and ease your way forward just a little bit. It doesn't matter how far. And when you inhale, you'll rise on back up to sitting tall. So the exhales bring you forward and the inhales bring you back, moving with your own breath. So the speed of your own breath, the length of your own breaths. next time that you come back up to sitting, let your arms release out beside you, fingertips lightly touching the floor here now. And let's inhale both arms all the way out and up overhead. And on our exhale, let our hands come together and right down through the midline to rest in front of our chest. Once you're there, lift your elbows up a little bit and bring your chin down towards your <coughs> chest. Release your back of your neck there, maybe even feeling it between the shoulder blades on your back. And then roll your head left ear towards your left shoulder. Let your hands come over to the right a little bit. So you come into the side of the neck stretch there. And then come back down with the head and the hands back to center. And we're going to roll to the other side with the head and let the hands go over to the left a little. And then we'll come on back again, chin down towards the chest, hands back to center, and rise your gaze on back forward again. And let's keep the hands together and inhale them right up through the midline. And on the exhale, open the arms on out like wings. And now bring your arms behind you. If you're in a chair, you can drag your arms over the back of the chair. If you're on the floor, you can come to fingertips. You can lean all the way back to flat hands if you choose to. But think about a string attached to your sternum being drawn forward like up and on a diagonal line a little bit. So you feel that lift through the chest, openness across the chest as well. One more breath. And then come on back upright, take a nice inhale. And on the exhale, let's twist to our right. Bring your left hand around, maybe all the way to your right knee, maybe to the midline of the body. And let your back right hand be wherever it feels comfortable. But enjoy finding that twist in the middle of the spine. Feel your chin parallel to the floor. One more inhale. And then on 
on the exhale, we'll come on back around through center. We're going all the way into the other direction. So just swiveling all the way around. And again, just finding that twist there in the middle of the back. Feel your sitting bones drawing down towards the surface you're sitting on. And feel your low belly gently engaging. Good. One more inhale. And on the exhale, come on back around into center again. And if you are cross-legged, we're going to switch the cross of our legs. You can stretch your legs out for a second if you want. Shake them out a little bit. And then we'll bring the other leg in front if you're cross-legged. And let's come forward and back again with our breath. So let yourself just start to easily feel the breath moving you forward and back. Letting your exhales bring you forward. And your inhales bring you back. And just imagine the back of your head staying in line with your spine so that you feel that length in the back of your neck and your throat. You don't feel like you're sending your chin forward and shortening the back of your neck at all. Good. And then the next time that you come back up to sitting, let yourself stay there. And we'll bring our hands on out beside us. Fingertips lightly touching the floor if you're on the ground. And let's inhale our right arm all the way out and up overhead. And then bend your elbow. Let your elbow bend. Let your hand come exactly wherever it wants to. So if it needs to come to the top of your head, put it there. Or behind your head or your neck or onto your upper back. Just find that tricep stretching out. And then reach into a long arm here. And we're gonna come over into side stretch. Left hand can give you a little support as you come over into your side stretch. And breathe into the right side of the body here. And be comfortable however you have your head here. You know, if it helps to turn to look down a little bit to release your neck, do that. Sometimes it even feels really good to look up a little. So you can experiment a little bit. Let yourself release through your neck. And then we're going to rise on back up and lower that right arm on down beside us. And let's inhale the left arm all the way out and up overhead. Bend the elbow at first. Again, wherever your left hand can come to. Try to keep your gaze forward so you're not rounding in your upper back, but you're Feeling yourself look directly forward, chin parallel to the floor. Good. And then we'll reach into that long arm again and come over into that side stretch. So the right hand can give you a little support. Breathing into the left ribs here. Good. One more breath. And then we'll rise on back up again. And from here, let's inhale our hands straight out from our shoulders and then flex your hands. So you feel like you're pressing into the heels of your hands there. Wake up the undersides of the arms. And then let your fingertips turn down towards the ground so you feel the tops of the arms a little more. And then just make your hands into loose fists and let those fists circle a bit. So you can keep going the same direction, might even get some pops and snaps out of them here, and then reverse when you're ready. Let yourself release there, and then shake your hands out a little bit, come on down. And we're gonna come around on towards our hands and knees from here. And if you know being on your hands and knees is not good for you, don't do it, you know. If you have a chair, if you're at home and you have a chair, you can put your hands up in the seat of the chair, you can hold on to the edge of the seat of a chair like that so that you don't have a wrist crease. The same thing if you're on the floor, right? I mean, you're more than welcome to come on to fists if your wrist bothered you. So take your time to get really easy with your hands under your shoulders, knees or feet under your hips. And then look down there between your hands for a second. Take a nice inhale. And as you exhale, draw up into your cat pose. So Tailbone drops down, rounding up into your back. Stay here for a second. Really press equally into your hands and into the tops of your feet, or if you're standing up, pressing down into your feet. And then on your next inhale, send your tailbone back and up. Belly sinks down, ribs sink down, heart melts down. You can stay looking down or you can look forward in your cow pose. So 
So start to move through these two poses with your own breath at your own timing. So it might be that you want to move a little faster. It might feel better to move really slowly. And also you might want to stop and cat or cow without moving for a couple of breaths and just experience the pose there. So just be mindful of what your own back feels like, right? That flowing through the spine very easily and naturally. Good. And finish the one that you're on or that you're moving into here now. And let's come on back to more neutral spine, looking down between our hands. And now just look over your right shoulder like you're looking back towards your feet. If you're on the floor, you can even shift your feet a little more to the right if you want. You know, a little more into a side stretch there. And then come back into center and we'll look over our left shoulder looking back towards our feet. Again, if you want to shift your feet a little more to the left, you can. And then release and come on back into center. And we're going to step our left foot forward, our right foot back, and find a lunge here. So if you need your blocks underneath your hands, you can have your blocks. Any height, you can use a chair underneath your hands, right? Whatever feels good for you. And coming into that lunge, be really mindful. You know, you may be able to right away get your hips pretty low, or you may feel like you need to shorten your stance and get up a little bit higher especially when you're warming up like this. So don't force anything. Just be mindful of that front knee coming no farther forward than your ankle. Let yourself enjoy the back of your body lengthening out as best you can. Good. And we're going to switch legs. So coming to the other side. It's a basic lunge here, but so important. And if you're like... We all got a little bit out of kilter last week with all the snow. If you do nothing more than lunging a little bit each side throughout the day, that's awesome. Right there is enough to make you feel better. One more breath here. And then we're going to switch again. Bringing that left foot back forward. And remember, you want to feel like you're on very narrow railroad tracks. And Think about drawing your shoulders away from your ears and drawing the back of your head into line with your spine if you can. And then zip up the low belly. Good, we're going to switch again. So remember, once you get your feet into that place where you feel pretty good there, start to feel the whole body in the lunge. Think of that extension through the back body. Reach into that inner left heel and think about reaching out through the top of your head. And there's a lot of length there. Zip up the low belly. Good. We're going to come forward from here into standing forward bend. Now, everybody's different. Standing forward bend. Feet hip distance apart and parallel. But you decide if you need support, right? You can always bend your knees, put your elbows above your knees, which will keep your low back from rounding, right? If your low back hurts or bothers you, you really need to be cautious. Um, some people it's fine to go ahead and release all the way forward over their legs because it feels really good. So just be mindful. Remember your knees can be bent. You want to feel your sitting bones over your heels. Allow the weight of the torso to help you just open up a little deeper in the backs of your legs. And if it's okay to let your head hang, just enjoy that weight of your head. The heaviness of the head creating space in your spine. Good. One more nice full breath here. And then we'll bring our hands up to our hips. We're going to bend our knees, press into our feet, and rise up to standing. And we'll inhale our arms all the way out and up overhead. And on our exhale, let our hands come down together in front of our hearts. 
So if you need to walk a little bit in place to get your feet adjusted under your hips here, do it. And you can always look at your feet, make sure you're not turning one foot or both feet out, trying to be pretty parallel. We're all a little bit different in how we stand in mountain pose. And then as you let your hands come to your heart, bring your awareness, even though you're looking out forward, whether your eyes are open or closed, bring your awareness to your feet and just feel very equal as you can. Imagine that you're pressing your feet into the ground like you're pushing the floor away from you. And then from there, kind of grow up out of those grounded feet. Feel your thighs start to gently lift upward. You don't want to lock your knees, but the thighs are engaging upward. Tailbone drops down, hips over ankles and shoulders over your hips. And then just enjoying, finding that sense of quiet strength, simply standing in your mountain pose. Remember, you don't want to tuck your tailbone forward. Imagine reaching your tailbone down towards between your heels. And then we'll unfold our arms right on down beside us. And let's inhale both arms all the way out and up overhead. You can look up if it doesn't bother your neck. And on the exhale, bend your knees and come on forward into that standing forward bend. And your next inhale is going to help you find a nice flat back. So your hands can be wherever you want, on your blocks, on your chair, on your legs. Lengthen out through your spine. Find that nice flat back. And step the right foot back and come into lunge. So again, as you find your lunge, make sure that front knee is bent no farther forward than your ankle. Feel the feet just gently press away from each other. Not harsh. And we're going to come on into downward facing dog pose from here. So you can decide whether you want your hands on blocks, any height, on the floor or on a chair. Right? You adjust how you need to. Really get comfortable for your shoulders. See if you can feel your elbows hugging gently towards each other. And you know, you can walk into a little bit as you come into your dog anytime, bending a knee at a time if that helps you adjust a little bit. Just enjoy reaching back through your tailbone, find that length through the spine. And on your next inhale, come on out towards a plank. You don't have to do a whole plank, you can always come down with your knees, you can come down with, be on your forearms and get out of your hands if you need to. And then we'll come on back to downward facing dog pose again. Elbows hug inward, remember feel that sense of your armpits kind of hollowing out a little bit. And we'll bring our right foot forward from here to find lunge. So whatever you need to do to get that foot forward, you can put your left knee down or you can just Put both knees down and step forward or be up and then come into the lunge. And then we'll step back into standing forward bend. Feet hips distance apart and parallel. Again, be mindful. Let yourself release where you can and feel your breath now. Feel those ribs expanding as you inhale. Let your face be soft and Imagine just releasing all around your eyes, all around your mouth. And then we'll bring our hand right back up to our hips and bend our knees, press into our feet, rise on straight up, and inhale our arms all the way out and up. And on our exhale, bring our hands down together in front of our hearts. Now inhale our hands right up through the midline. Once your hands get up there, clasp them together and then bring them down behind your head. So your elbows are reaching outward. You're pressing your head gently into your hands. Make sure you don't tuck your tailbone up under you. Feel the tailbone reaching down towards between your heels. Feel that engagement of the belly as you gently press the back of your head into your hands. One more breath here. And then let your elbows release down, release your arms down alongside your body. Now this time we're going to inhale our arms straight forward and then up overhead. And on the exhale, we'll bend our knees and come forward into our standing forward bend. Let your next inhale help you lengthen out through your spine. Again, hands can be where you like, legs, blocks, chair. 
And we'll step left foot back this time to find our lunge. Take your time again. Find that lunge. Press the feet gently away from each other. Feel how your belly engages. Inhale. Exhale into your downward facing dog pose. So again, it is up to you how your shoulders feel. If your hands are on the floor, you're more like an upside down V. If your hands are on the blocks, your heels might still be on the floor. They might not. It really depends on your shoulders. And on your next inhale, come on out towards your plank. Again, this is up to you. You can put forearms down. You can come down with your knees. So if you want to do a half plank, you can. Take your time. Let yourself really find that core strength there. And then we'll come on back into down dog again. And this time we will bring the left foot forward to come into lunge. So if you need to put the right knee down to get there too. And then we'll come all the way back into standing forward bend. Feet right underneath it. Now if you can here, lift all your toes up and see if you can. I mean you can look at your feet if you want. But see if you can make sure you're not rolling to the pinky toe sides of your feet or to the big toe sides of your feet, right? So trying to let yourself feel those four corners of the feet, the inner and outer heel and the base of the big toe mound and the base of your little toe mound. Spread your toes out a little bit if you can. And then let the toes release softly down to the floor, not, not gripping like cat claws, but just releasing. And then come back to your breath, releasing where you need to as far as how you hold yourself in your upper body or letting yourself hang, but feeling the ribs expand on your inhale. Imagining the top of the head getting closer towards the ground on your exhales. Good, and then we'll bring our hands back to our hips. We're gonna bend our knees and rise on up to standing. And inhale our arms all the way out and up overhead. And on our exhale, let our hands come down together in front of our hearts. We're going to inhale the hands right up through the midline. And on the exhale, open the arms like wings and come on forward, keeping your back pretty long until you fold into your forward bend. And let your next inhale lengthen your spine out. From here, we're going to walk into a down dog. So you place your hands where you like to be. Walk your way back into your downward facing dog pose. And take your time. Again, feel equal through your hands. If your hands are on the floor, really think of spreading your fingers nice and wide. It's harder on the blocks, I know. You can do that in the chair too, though. Spread your fingers. And on the next inhale, we'll come out to plank. Now, it is optional to head into any back bend from here. You can come down to the floor and come up into a sphinx pose if you want. So you can come down and be on your forearms and find sphinx. You can from your plank if you want. Just come down with the pelvis and come through with the chest for a little up dog or not do a back bend at all. And then we'll make our way back into downward facing dog pose. So take your time, walk a little bit if you need, move through your hips. If you want to wag your tail around a little bit, do it. Good. We're going to come out to that plank again. Again, you can do a back bend or not. You can come down to your forearms. You can move in towards a cobra or an up dog, not necessary. And then we'll make our way back again into downward facing dog pose. Good, and from here, we're gonna bring our right foot forward to come into lunge. Again, you can put your left knee down and then bring that right foot forward. And then we'll step back into our standing forward bend. Full deep breaths. Remember, if your back bothers you, use support, whatever you need. Elbows above your knees. If you have a chair seat there, you know, you can put your forearms on it and lengthen your spine out. I use a coffee table at home, which is a really good height, too. So just breathe easy, even breath. So if you can, count when you inhale and think about getting to that same count when you exhale, or maybe even a little bit longer on your exhale. Good, 
One more breath. And then we'll bend our knees and bring our hands to our hips. We're gonna rise up to standing and inhale our arms all the way out and up. And on our exhale, bring our hands down together in front of our hearts. Let's bring our left arm on top of our right. So take your time, let yourself give a hug. It doesn't matter whether you hold low like towards your armpits or maybe you like your hands going up and over your shoulders. And you can move your head around too if that feels good. Letting yourself just release through your neck. It can come forward. I mean, you may even decide you want to look up or tilt your head a little bit. Oh, just let that space between the shoulder blades feel good. Now you can stay right here, or you can head in towards an eagle or a half eagle wrap with your arms. You can slide the back of your right hand to the outside of your left elbow, which is a little bit different in the shoulders than hugging, or you can send the backs of the hands towards each other, or have your right fingers go onto that left palm. And now see if you can sit back a little bit, coming in like you're coming into chair pose. Doesn't have to be deep. The elbows are still kind of rising up a little bit off the chest if you're in your eagle wrap. And you're sitting back, thinking of like if there was a high chair back there, you're gonna sit right on it, feeling your thighs engage. And then we're gonna rise on back up from there and release our arms on down beside us. Float the arms out from the shoulders for a second and then bring the right arm on top of the left this time. So giving that hug, and again, adding if you want a little bit of movement there of the head, whatever feels good, right? If it doesn't feel good, don't do it. Just let it feel really easy to open up that space between the shoulder blades on your back. And then Coming back, again, you can slide to the half eagle if that's better. The back of the left hand comes to the outside of your right elbow, and they're just kind of pressing into each other there. Or you can come into backs of the hands towards each other, left fingers onto that right palm if that feels okay. And then again, sitting a little bit back. So coming into the thighs here, feeling the feet in the floor, knees right out over the center of your feet. Good. See if you can breathe into between the shoulder blades on your back. And then we'll rise on back up again. We're gonna lower those arms on down and we're gonna inhale the right arm all the way out and up overhead and come over into a side stretch here. So let yourself in the standing side stretch. Feel that right foot reaching into the ground and then reaching all the way through the side body up through the fingertips there. And then we'll use your belly to rise up and lower that right arm down. And let's inhale the left arm up. Feel the left foot really in the floor as you really reach higher through the left fingertips, pressing down a little more into that left foot, breathing into the left ribs. Ah, and then we'll rise on back up and lower that arm on down. And bring your hands to your heart. If you need to adjust your feet for mountain pose, do. You can look at them if you need. And then just enjoy. Feel very centered here after completing warm-ups and our sun salutations a little more. Everything feels a little easier, actually, doesn't it? Breathing, too, really. and then we'll go ahead and release our arms on down. Shake out a little bit. And if you need to walk around, do. We're gonna do some warriors here. So if you need, if you're using a chair, turn it around so that you have the support of the back of the chair. And those of you who don't have a chair, make sure your blocks are handy, so if you need them, it's front of your mat. And we're gonna step our right foot back, our left foot's forward, and we're gonna come into warrior two. Right foot about parallel to the back edge of our mat, and the left foot parallel to the long end of our mat. And then take your time here. Let yourself just feel, look down at your left knee. Make sure you're lined up there. The knee's not going out beyond your toe. And then we'll start to release our hands down to our thighs. You're still looking down now. Look down at your, at your left knee or foot there. And now when you start to float your arms up, like there's balloons blowing up under your arms, just slowly rise your gaze up so that it comes to be right out over the top of that left hand. Feel the feet equal in the floor. 
Imagine the feet pressing equally away from each other here now. Reaching out equally through both sets of fingertips. It's like your arms are growing out of your back. You're, you're not tensing up the tops of your shoulders. And now put your right hand down on your right hip. Bend your elbow. Let yourself kind of like I'm a little teapot, right? And we're going to straighten the left leg out. And we're going to bring that left hand down for a triangle. Now you may want to have the hand just come to your thigh. You may want to use your chair to lengthen the underside of the body that way. You may want to use the chair seat. You might want to put your hand down onto a block. If you want to go that low, you can bring your hand to a block, either in front of or behind your left leg there. And then roll that right shoulder up towards the ceiling. Feel your thighs lifting upward towards your hips. And if you want to extend your right arm up, you can straight up from your shoulder, but that's not necessary. You can keep the hand down on your hip. Good. Feel those thighs lifting up, creating space in your knees. One more breath. And then we're going to bend the left knee. Now we're going to come back to warrior two. So you got to really press the feet away from each other. Get back into the core body to come on back into your warrior two. Looking out over the top of the left hand. And then we'll bring our hands down and we're going to turn our feet more parallel for a wide legged forward bend. So getting your feet at least a little wider than your shoulders, maybe a lot, depending on you. And you can grab your blocks if you need them as you come on down with hands to blocks for the floor. So if bending a knee at a time feels okay for your knees, let yourself, even if it's just a tiny little bend, bend one knee at a time. And when you find that straight leg, just really focus on opening up the inner thigh there on that long leg. And then finish off so you can come back into center. Let yourself lengthen out your spine here. Whether you have your hands on blocks any height or down on the floor, look straight down and let yourself press your feet away from each other like you're trying to make your mat longer. Now you can do that with bent knees, or you can do that with straight knees, but think about your inner thighs melting their way behind you there. And then you can decide to stay in this pose for a few breaths, whether you need to stay with your back long like this. If you wanna get out of your hands, you can always stack your blocks up and put your forearms on them so you're not into your hands, your wrists at all. Or you can let yourself hang. If you're okay to bring your hands back more towards between your feet. You can allow yourself to fold into a, a place where you can be with your breath. Just remember you don't want to feel stress in your body. You want to be able to let go here, release in the upper body, and focus on the breaths in and out, feeling the ribs expand as you inhale, and feeling how they contract back in when you exhale. And one more breath here. And now to come up, you take your time. You walk your hands out and then uh, again, if you need to bring your feet closer together before you rise up, do it. And be mindful too if you're dizzy. So you've got a wall right there, you can put your hand on a wall. You can keep your feet wide a little bit longer if you need to, if you feel dizzy. And then also if you need to move through your feet before we do the other side. So for me, I warriors on all, so I always need to circle my ankles or turn to the tops of my feet. It feels really good. So we're gonna do the other side. So this time it'll be the left foot back for warrior two. So again, that left foot is about parallel, about, you know, if you like to send your left heel back farther, you can. That depends on your ankle, your knee, and lining up your heels and bending into that right knee and look down at it again let your hands just stay down on your thighs and really as you bend that right knee get it lined up make sure it's not going out to, to your toes you should be able to see your toes and now again when you just imagine before the arms move balloons are just going to blow up under your in your armpits kind of right 
So it's easy. The arms just float. You can start to bring your gaze up as well so that when your hand gets right forward in your shoulder, you can look right out over the top of your hand. Imagine that left arm is reaching just as equally backward as you're reaching forward with the right. Feel the feet in the floor equally. Finding that power and strength of your warrior two. And then we'll bring our left hand down to our left hip. We're going to straighten the right leg out for triangle. And again, as you bring your hand down, it is up to you what you use. You know, you can use your leg. If you want to, you know, you can also stack blocks. If you want to be higher, you can use two blocks. And the blocks can be in front of or behind that leg. And then just take your time. Let yourself enjoy extending your torso out over that leg. And if you decide to, you can roll the left shoulder up to keep your hand down. If you decide to add the arm, it can go straight up from your shoulder with the palm facing out, all right? So that your shoulder feels good. Not necessary to even add the arm. Again, feel the thighs engaging up towards the hips. One more breath, good. And now we're gonna bend that right knee and we're gonna come on back into warrior two. So again, you have to really press those feet away from each other as you rise back up. And then we'll bring our hands down and we're gonna turn our feet parallel again. So again, if you want your blocks in front of you, if you need to kind of adjust how wide your stance is, by all means do it. So you're attempting to be fairly parallel with your feet, right? Once you get there, Bend your knees, both of them, and let your elbows come to rest above your knees if you can. So you're lengthening out through the spine. You're in a, a squat here. You can let yourself enjoy. And then let your right shoulder just reach across like it's reaching towards your left foot. So there's just a, a little twist there in the upper back. And then come on back into center and reach across with your left shoulder, kind of drawing over like it's going down towards your foot. And then come on back into center. And then take your hands either to blocks or the floor and walk over towards the right. You might just want to shift your blocks a little to the right, or you might want to walk your hands all the way over and hold on to your outside of your ankle or your foot. Go where you can, stay and be with your breath a couple of breaths there. And then we'll come on back through center and we're going to go the other side. Again, you can use your blocks, walk with your blocks a little bit. You can bring yourself towards your foot with your hands if you want. Find where you can be there with your breath. And then we'll slowly come on back into center again. And take your time, set up however you need here. I mean, if you want to hold your ankles, if you want to bring your hands between your feet or walk your hands back behind you, you know you're more than welcome to do that. You can set your blocks up any way you need for underneath your hands or your forearms or even your head. You know, you can always rest your head on blocks if you need. You need to move around a little bit more to find that best place, do it. So that when you do come into, again, releasing into your breath it's easy obviously you're engaged in the lower half of the body but you're really trying to let go in the upper half of the body and feel those full complete breaths in and out so see if you can stay following your breath all the way in and all the way out rise up you know take your time you can bring your feet together closer if you need to before you rise up easing your way into where you can be and then again if you need to move through your feet a little bit do walk around your mat if you need to 
we're going to come into warrior one this time. So if you have your chair there, you can still have it this way. Bring your blocks around. So they're here at the front of your mat, though. And we're going to come coming forward to the front of the mat. Then we're going to step our right foot back. And we're coming into warrior one so that our shoulders are square to the front of our mat. That back foot, how far back you step is up to you. But letting yourself feel that right heel reaching backward a little bit. So most people are turned out 20, 30 degrees in this right back foot, right? Your hips might be square, they might not. Shoulders, you want to bring your shoulders around. Bring your hands together there in front of your chest. Let yourself then just enjoy feeling very equal through your feet all the way up through your legs into your hips. Good, and let's inhale the hands up through the midline of the body. And then open them into a kind of a wide V. It depends on you how wide. Turn your pinkies towards each other. Maybe you can bring your gaze up a little bit. Feel that lift there, that little bit of lift right here at the base of the shoulder blades. So you can keep your gaze forward if that's better for you. But allow yourself to feel as balanced as you can here in this warrior one. Inhaling up the front of the body and exhaling down the back of the body. One more breath. And then we're going to lower our arms on down and we're going to come down with our hands to find lunge. So whether you want to use your blocks to find your lunge now, adjusting how you need to reach back into your normal lunge here. And we're going to add a twist, bringing our left hand now to our left hip and turning in the twist. Let your hand stay on your low back for a second, even if you want to rise it up. Feel that levelness here in your hips. Try not to drop into that right long side. Try to stay fairly level. And then you can decide if you want to add your arm up or not. You can keep your hand right down on your hip. Don't do anything that bothers your shoulder. Good. One more breath. And then bring your hand on down. We're going to straighten the left knee out right away and just let the right heel descend directly behind your foot. So you're not coming into pyramid. Try not to turn the heel inward. Try to just reach directly back through it so you get opening through the backs of both legs there. Good. One more breath. Good. And we're going to step forward. Bend that left knee to step our right foot forward and come on into standing forward. Bend briefly. Get your feet underneath you. And then go ahead and bend your knees. Press equally into your feet and rise on up. We'll inhale the arms out and up overhead. And on our exhale, bring our hands down together in front of our heart. And then from here, we're going to step our left foot back and come into warrior one on the other side. So again, how, how long of a stance you take in warrior one? It's not important. Getting your shoulders square and also wide of a stance. Sometimes it feels better to separate your feet a little wider, like you're on railroad tracks in your warrior one. If that feels better to your hips, that's fine. So you want to get yourself to where you feel, again, equal. Even though this front knee is bent, the back leg is straight, you feel very equal between your legs, your hips. Bring your hands to your heart. Imagine for a second you're kind of zipping up through the front of the body a little bit, starting at your pubic bone and just zipping up through the front of the body. Remember, you don't want to tuck your tailbone forward and allow this movement in the upper body here. Your tailbone's kind of reaching back towards, towards that back left heel. I'm just going to inhale the hands now up through the midline. Open them as wide as you want. And if you need to leave them forward for your own shoulders, do. You can look up a little bit. You can have the arms forward. You can have the arms by your ears. They can be wider or closer in. So find where you feel the most openness, right? Inhaling up the front of your body and exhaling down the back. Good. One more breath. And then we're going to release. We're going to bring our hands down to find that lunge. So again, how high you have your hands. You can be up on the seat of the chair. You can be up on blocks any height. 
We're going to add that twist, remember. So once you get really set in your lunge, bring your right hand onto your right hip and draw yourself into that twist with the hand on the low back. Again, you can stay right there. You've got some weight in that left hand. You can decide if you want to reach the right arm up as well. Maybe not. Maybe it feels better for your shoulder to keep your hand down. Good. One more breath. And then bring your right hand on back down. We're going to straighten that right knee out now. Both legs are straight. Left heel is descending straight back from your foot. Just opening up through the backs of the legs there. Extending your torso out over that front inner leg there. And then we'll bend the front knee so we can step forward and get our feet right under us again. Take your time, get set with the feet the distance apart you like, pretty parallel with your feet, arches lifting up, four corners of the feet into the ground, and then we'll bend our knees, press into our feet. We're going to rise on up and inhale our arms all the way out and up. And on our exhale, let our hands come down together in front of our hearts. Finding your mountain pose here now. Adjust as you need. Remember, whether your eyes are open or closed, imagine you're looking out towards where the horizon would be. Enjoy letting the body really kind of balance itself out. So if you give yourself time, really, your body wants to be aligned. Once you get that alignment of your pelvis, you get yourself stacked. Imagine you're being supported by the air all around you. And then go ahead and let your arms come on down. Hands, shake out whatever you need. Walk around if you need to. And we're going to bring the, the short edge of our mat all the way into a wall. All right, so that you have the wall there. And you can let yourself turn to, let's put our left hand on the wall. And we'll do a little tree pose. So getting yourself grounded in, in your left foot, bringing your right foot in. Now you may decide you want to put your right heel on the inside of your ankle and your toes on the ground for your tree pose. You can always do that, having your hands to your heart and just balancing without holding the wall. Sometimes if you do that for a couple of breaths, you really want to float your right foot up to your inner calf below your knee. And if you're like, yeah, no, I don't want to do that without holding the wall, then don't, right? <laughs> but if it feels like fun, you can try it. You can put your hand back to the wall. Those of you who like to bring your foot up into your inner thigh, of course, do that in tree pose. That is up to you. Up to your hips, too, as well. So take your time. You can play with your balance, arms overhead, or keeping your hands to your heart. Whatever feels just really easy for you here. So try not to think of, so in tree pose, sometimes you just want to make yourself do it, right? You just want to force yourself and <laughs> lock yourself into tree pose. But remember, there's a movement in the trees in the breeze, right? So. Try to feel that uplift in the front of the body and a kind of downward flow through the back. Beautiful. And then come on back down, and we're going to turn around and do the other side. So you're standing on your right foot. Again, the left heel can come to the inner ankle where you keep the ball of the foot or the toes on the floor. Maybe that will enable you to just let go of the wall and feel that uplift through the front of the right hip. And that's really important that you don't sit back, sit into that right hip, right? And it makes it a lot easier to think of bringing that left foot up to the inside of the leg higher, whether it's the calf or the inner thigh. Remember, you don't want to push your foot into your knee, so you want to be either below or above the knee. And remember, none of us have like a 180 degree turnout, so that knee is open, but you're really staying level in your hips. Beautiful. One more breath there. And then when you're ready, come on down. Let yourself turn back to left shoulder to the wall again. And get kind of close to the wall where your shoulder's really on the wall.
and tilt your head towards the wall. Maybe, hopefully, you can just rest the left side of your head on the wall. Now, it is up to you. You know, this all depends on your shoulders. You can either just stay here, put your right hand on your hip, or let your arm hang, or you can rise the right arm up and put the fingertips on the wall over above your head to come into side stretch here. Or they can be forward, too, if that feels better for your shoulders. The hand can come forward. Breathing into the right ribs, just opening up there. Let the wall support you. Now you might, you can step sideways more away from the wall, keep your head on the wall and get maybe a little bit more. It might even feel better, that's up to you. One more breath. Good, and then step back to the wall if you were away. Lower your right arm down and we're gonna rise the left inside arm up the wall. Now, you might have to step away here because you're going to bend your elbow and put your left hand down, either behind your head or maybe more to the top of your head, behind your neck, or onto your upper back. So this is up to you. You know, that, that really don't hurt anything in your shoulder. Step away if you need. If any of you want to put your right hand onto your low back with your palm facing out, you can do that. You can even decide you want to try to reach your hands towards each other on your back. Remember, this position for that, you think it's really the top shoulder, but really the bottom shoulder is in a very unusual position to do that. So don't force anything about that. Good. And just enjoy bringing your gaze forward, feeling that sense of openness through the chest, almost like you're breathing in and out through your heart. And then step away from the wall, bring your arms on down, release there, shake them out. We're going to roll to the other side, get close to the wall, and then tilt the head into the wall again. So you can feel that ease of the head being supported by the wall. And again, if adding that left arm up, that outside arm up, and putting the fingertips on the wall feels good, you can. Bring the arm forward or don't bring it up at all if it hurts, right? Now, if you want to step farther away, maybe you can step away and still lean your, keep your head into the wall. It might feel really good, it might not. So, breathing into the left ribs. And then coming up, so if you need to step back into the wall, do. Letting your arm come down, this time the right inside arm comes up the wall. And again, this is all, you know, totally optional. If you have to move away from the wall, totally do. If your elbow needs to come way forward, do it. Do find what mobility you have in your own shoulder, in other words. Left hand behind you, if you can turn the palm out, you can stay right there. Just make sure you're not tucking your tailbone forward, which rounds you into your upper back. Feel the tailbone reaching down towards between your heels. Bringing your gaze forward. And again, imagine you're breathing in and out through your heart. And then come on away from the wall. Let your arms come down. Shake it out a little bit. Good. Let your arms swing a little bit. So come away from the wall so you don't bang them into the wall. And let your arms just swing forward and back a little bit. And then just let them swing kind of in these little circles. So, I mean, they, you kind of got to stop the swing a little bit. But, and then reverse. Just let them be easy. Good. And we're going to make our way down onto the floor. So we're going to sit. So if you know sitting on the floor for you is better done on a blanket, have a blanket to sit on. Stretch your legs on out in front of you for a second here. Shake them out a little bit. Good. And let's cross uh, into a figure four with our left ankle above our right knee. So I forgot to tell you, Tara, that when I say left, I usually would mirror in a class, but the camera reverses everything. Mm -hmm. so, so when I say left, I do left. So if you get confused, don't worry about it. <laughs> so everybody's going to think of left ankle crossing above or below your knee in that figure four. That is up to you. 
And then you can take your hand to your foot if you want. I mean, you can even kind of massage your foot a little bit. If it's cold, give it a little warmth. If anybody likes to do the interlacing fingers between your toes, if that works for you to make space between the toes that way and that feels good, you can. And we're gonna come a little bit forward. Now, as you kind of work with your foot here, it depends on you. You might just barely wanna let yourself come a little bit forward from your low back. Some of you may decide you wanna let your hand be there and really focus on coming forward with a nice long back. So just be mindful. You're gonna feel the back of that right leg, obviously. Letting yourself release that left hip. Good, one more breath. And now come on up and see if you can now take hold of the lower leg here and lift it up a little bit, up off, off so that you're holding your leg. Now try to actually really let your leg release into your hands. Kind of rock it a little bit side to side. You're using your arms though. You're trying to let that hip really release. Kind of like you're rocking a baby. I mean, you can even cradle the leg up farther towards you if your hip allows you to do that, right? So that you can find a nice big release in that hip. Good. And then from there, bring yourself on foot to the floor. Cross your right foot a little more to the midline and bring that left foot over to the outside. Whether it's below or above the knee, it doesn't matter. Sitting up nice and tall here, feeling your sitting bones drawing down. Take a nice inhale. And on the exhale, we're gonna twist to the left. Bring the left hand behind you. Think about your right ribs coming towards that left inner thigh. And you can hold with your hand there on your knee. You can wrap if you want. If the knee's in really close to you and you wanna wrap your forearm across, uh, go to the crook of the elbow there with your knee, you can. Or you can bring your arm across to the outside of your leg in your twist. But be mindful. If, if you feel like you're too deep in the twist, kind of come back out of it a little bit when you inhale. And then maybe you want to come a little farther into it as you exhale. That's up to you. You can look as far back behind yourself as you want. Good. One more breath. Now use your belly to bring you back around into the front. And we're gonna switch legs. So coming into crossing the other ankle above or below the knee, and then again, see if you can let, let yourself do what you want with your foot. So if you can interlace your fingers, maybe you just wanna massage your foot a little bit. If it's cold, you might wanna just wrap it up. <laughs> it's still cold on the floor, isn't it? <laughs> so take your time. And again, just be mindful as you start to think of coming a little bit forward, right? Coming forward here, feeling the back of that left leg, feeling this hip, this right hip release. Good, one more breath here. And now take your time as you come on up. Again, you're gonna pick your leg up, remember, so let yourself release to bring that leg on up and you can rock a little bit. Try to let yourself again feel the weight of your leg. If you feel like you wanna cradle the leg up more, do. Just be easy, take your time. And then let yourself release, bring the foot to the floor, cross again that left leg a little more to the midline, bring your right foot over to the outside, below or above your knee, it doesn't matter. And let yourself lengthen up. And as we come into that twist, bringing the right hand behind us, again, you feel both your sit bones drawing down. How deeply you go in the twist, totally up to you. Take your time, lengthen up through the top of your head. Good, one more nice full deep breath. 
and then use your belly to bring you back on around into center. And let's stretch our legs out and take your time here now. Bring your hands behind you. And you can either be on fingertips, if that's better for your shoulders so that you're not putting weight into your shoulders, or you can come flat onto your hands. But draw your chest forward, let yourself open up here through the chest. Really breathing from the belly into the ribs all the way up into your chest. Good, and then we'll come on back up. And from here, we're gonna lie down onto the floor under our backs. So have your blocks handy in case you want them, all right? Well, come on down, let yourself lie down and feel the feet on the floor there. Your knees are bent and let the knees just easily come from side to side. Just doesn't matter how far, however far feels good for you. Just letting yourself release your back. Good, and then come on back to center with the knees. Let's bring our right knee in towards our chest. Now you can hold your shin or you can hold behind your thigh. And we're gonna extend our left leg down long on the floor. Flex through both your feet. Feel your leg gently, right leg coming into your hands so you have that bit of a natural curve in your low back. And then hold behind your right thigh and set your right foot up like you're putting a footprint on the ceiling. So your knee is still bent. You're holding behind your thigh. You can kind of hug the thigh in deeper towards you if you want. And if you feel like extending the leg longer, go right ahead and, and give yourself longer leg. You can hold wherever you want. You can reach up to hold your calf or your foot if you want to. Just release into the back of the leg there. One more breath. And then we'll bend that knee, bring it back in, and we're gonna bring the left knee in and extend the right leg down long on the floor. Flex through both your feet here again. Feel that left leg gently pressing into your hands. So you can enjoy feeling that natural curve in the low back. And then Take a hold behind your left thigh and put your left foot up like you're putting a footprint on the ceiling there. And again, you can just kind of hug your thigh down more towards you. You don't have to lengthen the leg unless it feels good to you, right? If coming into a straighter leg feels good, you can again reach up to hold a little higher on your leg if you want, totally up to you. Just open up here. Good, and then we'll bend that knee. Let's bring both knees now into the chest. Come on up into a little happy baby pose. You can let yourself release side to side in your happy baby if you want. You can hold your feet, your ankles. You can hold behind your thighs if you'd rather. Let it feel really good. And then bring your knees on back in towards each other. Put your feet on the floor. And you decide from here whether you think a bridge pose or perhaps a supported bridge pose sounds good. So feet at least a little bit wider than for your mountain pose, but still parallel. And as you press into the backs of your arms to float up, if you're like, I have done enough, I want to release, you can grab that block and Really support yourself on a block or two so that you can release your low back. Or you can come into your bridge pose and take your time there to stay or to move up and down out of bridge pose if that feels better to you. So if you feel like when you get up into bridge pose that you feel it in your back, you don't wanna feel it in your back, you'll feel your thighs. But if you feel that you get up there and you're tensing up and, and you're like really feeling uncomfortable at all, just come down. Sometimes having your feet come a little bit different distance from you helps the pose feel better. So, you know, your heels, how far they are away from your buttocks when you rise up can make a big difference. 
and how the pose feels. So just be mindful. If you need to rest, rest. If you like to stay in supported bridge and just be there and let your back release, then by all means do. Really take your time. And also remember, you don't have to wait for me if you want to come down from bridge pose. You don't need to wait for me to tell you to come down. You can always come down anytime. You can bring your knees into your chest when you come down so that you can release your back. So be mindful if you do come down and your body, after you release your back a little bit, automatically wants to do something else, let yourself do that. We're getting ready, I'm starting to turn out the lights here and I will start to walk around to bring anything that sounds good. So a lot of us in here really enjoy having bolsters under our knees. I have an inkling of a few. <laughs> so if you're at home and you don't have a bolster, then you lie on your back and you feel uncomfortable. You're welcome. Let me know here if you need a bolster, but at home you can use rolled up blankets if you don't have a bolster, or you can use, well pillows are kind of hard because you have to crunch them up, but if you stretch out and you're not comfortable, the point is you want to be comfortable. You want to be able to let your body release here after a yoga class. So just ease your way. You know, there's no right or wrong. Traditionally in Shavasana, we lie on our backs with our arms slightly away from the body, palms up, and the feet a little apart like they're coming towards the corners of your mat and, and just released. But if you're not comfortable that way, do what you need, whatever support. Sometimes underneath the back of the head is nice to have a little bit of a blanket to release the back of your neck. Just be mindful here. If anybody needs anything here, again, wave at me. Even if your feet are cold, I can bring a blanket. And then just be with your breath. Let yourself accept your breaths in and out. Feeling that ease of the body gently responding to your breath. So as your breath quiets down, your body does as well. It's our minds that have a little bit of more activity that continues, right? So if you can, just keep bringing your focus back to your breath. And just let the waves of your breath lead you into these little quiet places where you can benefit from all you just did. And just allow yourself to completely and fully relax.
gently supporting you, allowing your breath to gradually deepen and lengthen. Feel those deeper breaths really gradually renewing you, really refreshing you, bringing you back to wanting to move again. Fingers, toes, hands and feet. You know, take your time moving up through your wrists, your ankles as you need and let your arms and legs move the way they need. You might even want to let your head roll a little side to side as we come back into moving. Take your time. You know you're welcome to roll onto either your right or your left side if you're comfortable to do that with your knees soft. And coming into a soft fetal position can be a good way to give yourself time to adjust, but follow what your body needs to do. And take your time. So that when you do feel like you're ready to rise up, it feels easy. You can float your way up to sitting and have your eyes, if possible, stay closed or close them again once you get up, if that's better for you. Just get comfortable in how you're seated once you get up. Let yourself adjust to having your head up above your heart again once you're there too. you're seated comfortably come back to your breath watching your breaths in and out and on your next exhale let your hands come gently to meet there in front of your chest and wishing each one of you a very joyful day. Namaste.